when people say free will, you say it's free, but then when you choose to exercise your will, you get punished for making a decision that doesn't go in line with what God, you know, Allah or you know Yahweh or any of these beings are telling you to. So, do you think everything you say, you may potentially at one point in your life change your mind when new information comes? Why does God need emotions? Why is God grieving? Why is God jealous? Why is God having these attributes that are clearly lesser beings? So some people call it flower of life and then there's the flip side of people calling it the daisy of death. What are your opinions on maybe specifically the symbol of flower of life? Hey, my name is Cam and my religious beliefs, I'd say there is no label to it at the moment. So last time I came on here and labeled myself as something, now I label myself as nothing. I am all of the above, all of the below, to the left, to the right, inside, outside, all of the religions. So I've come from a background of studying every single religion, um, every single conspiracy theory, every single scroll and everything that everyone's found in every cave, been there, done that, and I've come to the conclusion that currently I don't want to be labelled with any label. So here I am. Hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm Saken. I don't really have a belief because I, I break down that the word belief is really when you do the research and what that means is to not know, right? So it's the acceptance of things you do not know or that cannot be proven. So anyone can believe anything and they're entitled to that. I prefer to deal with the facts, deal with the evidence, and I have a culture which is Wu Sabat and that's what I practice. And Wu Sabat really covers pretty much everything. Um, so, but I do know what belief systems are because I came from the school of belief, meaning that I was, you know, going through the schools of religion, um, especially the monotheistic religions of Islam, Judaism, Christianity. So I do understand beliefs and that people are entitled to have beliefs. But I think belief will really lead you to knowing. I think to know is more important than to believe something because a belief is just personal to a person. Anyone can believe anything and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you start to scrutinise it and go into the facts, then it kind of um, clears it up. So, yeah, that's, that's me. So, uh, I think the first question I would ask mm. is, um, following every question that I have and your answers, do you believe that is the ultimate truth? Or do you think everything you say, you may potentially at one point in your life change your mind when new information comes? Yeah, that's why um, our books, the series of books that we publish, or the, the author, Dr. Malachi Z. York, publishes are called Actual Facts because there is a difference between a fact and an actual fact, and that relates to your question. So, for example, um, many things were believed, you know, a long time ago, and then with technology and with new advances, facts come out. So, yes, you're right that an actual fact is something that is current right now, and it's factual now, and it's a consensus, a consensus amongst the people that, the, you know, whether it's archaeologists, historians or scientists, they can all agree on that now. But at some point in the future with more information, you get more clarity, you know. So, yes, things do evolve and change. This is why change is really the only constant, because if you're stuck in something that you believe like 1400 years ago or 2000 years ago or even, you know, 6000 years ago, and you're not able to adapt with what's happening in real life today, then you're kind of stagnant. You can't, you can't evolve, but really life, nature always evolves. Yeah. Okay, I think an interesting one we can start with is um, the use of religious and um, spiritual symbols. Mm. So for example, uh, there's one symbol that um, is quite commonly used in the spiritual community, which is the flower of life. Mm. Um, but then there's also a concept of having the symbol be hijacked or even more so actually be a false symbol. So some people call it flower of life and then there's the flip side of people calling it the daisy of death. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your opinions on maybe specifically the symbol of flower of life and yeah, just symbols being hijacked, maybe used for negative, negatively polarized purposes. Mm. And then how 
can somebody maybe discern from what is the real truth and what is something masquerading as truth when using symbols and their mm. energy? Yeah, you're right. So symbols are very powerful because before words, there were pictures and you can look at something and it can convey an energy or a certain amount of resonance that you feel. Um, but you're right, there's also duality in everything. So this is where you have the two sides of God and the devil, for example, and then you will be in the middle. And <clears throat> so you might have a, a symbol like the cross, for example, and religious people, more specifically Christians, would use that as a symbol to represent God. Um, and it can even tie to what they will say Jesus Christ was crucified under, which is why people adorn it. But then if you're a devil worshipper, for example, and you don't subscribe to the fact that they're, what they're calling God is a good being, especially when you look through the Bible and see how God is behaving and acting and the things he's doing, you will be like, God is doing some bad stuff here. So I actually want to support the devil. Let me give you an example. So, for example, in the Bible, in Genesis, when they say God told Adam and Eve not to eat the, the tree, you know, um, in the garden, because if they eat it, they're going to die that day. And then this person or character that they call the devil came along and said, that's not true. Um, God knows that when you eat it, you will not die and your eyes are going to be open. And when you analyze it, the devil, so-called devil, actually told them the truth because when they ate the, the tree, the fruit from the tree, they didn't die that day. And so if you're thinking, you're going to be like, hmm, the devil actually told the truth. So people that are going to follow the devil, in quotes, they will wear the cross upside down. You see, so now there's a cross that way and then there's an upside down cross. So they're both the same symbol and each one has a viewpoint. Now, when you see like the unk, for example, that I'm wearing, because that's a symbol, people tell you that this is the key to life. And this is kind of predating the cross. And people will say that the cross came from this. So when you break down, OK, what does that symbol mean? You know, like I said, it's like the key to life. Symbols are very powerful. Now, again, when you look at, say, another symbol, say the six pointed star or any star, in the religious world, they're going to say that star, whether it's a five-pointed star or a six-pointed star, and then they'll have a crescent. So in Islam, Christianity, Judaism, they have the star and the crescent. Um, people will say the five-pointed star is the symbol of the devil because it relates to, you know, Baphomet. Um, but then others will say, no, it's a star representing the sun, and the sun is the giver of life. And... The sun is very powerful and without the sun, there will be no life on the planet. So it all depends on what angle you're coming from. And there's always going to be those two sides or duality to everything. And it just depends on your, your viewpoint. So, for example, the number nine, it's another symbol. Um, if you look at it from the other angle or the different perspective, it's going to be a six. And some will say six, 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 six is the devil's number. But then you look at it from the other way, it's nine, 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 nine which is infinity or nine to the nine power of nine, which means limitless. So you can pick any symbol, anything, and there will always be two opposing sides. The question is, which side do you subscribe to or stand on? So what determines um, what energy that symbol would hold? Is it the, the, the person wearing or using the symbol? Or is it something that's pre-programmed in the universe? So for example, let's say somebody now um, buys some kind of jewellery and they're wearing it, they yeah. don't know what the symbol is, they just resonated with it. Um, let's say now, what determines what energy they'll be channeling using that piece of jewellery? It depends on the, um, the origins of that symbol, because as you say, something can start off good and then can be made bad, or something can start off bad and then people can make it good. Um, you know, simple example like words. You can use a word in a positive way or in a negative way. And I think the good example would be like, let's say, fire, right? If you were wearing a symbol of fire, um, someone would say, is fire good or bad? Then you'd be like, well, 
They use fire to depict hell and you're going to go to hell and burn in fire forever and ever. And then you say, but we need fire to cook food or to warm ourselves or to feed a baby. So is it a bad thing to have fire or is fire bad or good? The, the answer is literally, what do you use it for? And if you use it in a negative way, then of course it's going to be bad to some people. So that's why I gave that example. So fire can be bad because it can burn houses down, it can burn you, you can have, you know, really bad burns. But without fire, you couldn't warm yourself or cook food or do any other good stuff with it. So going back to your original question, it's about the energy that you utilize that symbol or thing for, you see. So you can use any symbol for good or bad. So you said the power is more in the holder rather than the tool. Yeah. So the holder would channel whatever energy using that same symbol that somebody can also flip and use for the exactly. for negative purposes. Because, for example, as loved as I am on YouTube by many people, you will always, you will always have people who don't like you, who try to come at you with the negatives or, you know, even go as far as saying hate you. But if I allowed the people that hate me or come up with that energy to affect me, I'm allowing that to happen, but I choose not to. So I would, it just doesn't affect me, it doesn't mean anything. I'm more subscribed to the love and to the people that are showing me the mm. positivity because that's what I'm projecting, you see. So yeah, it's down to you as a person, how you allow, you know, whatever. Because then if someone can do voodoo on you from wherever they are, unless you actually believe in voodoo or accept it, it's like, doesn't doesn't exist to you because you're blocking that energy off so you have to have your own psychic defense so whatever is coming at you you have the power to translate or transform it so if you send me negative energy i have the power to turn that into positive energy and send it back out into the world what people do some people do is they say return to sender that's not good because if you send me negative energy and i send it back to you then I'm not helping you, one, because I'm giving you back a negative energy to use and send to other people, as opposed to if you're coming with hate and I come with love to you, it's kind of hard for you not to, like, you know, you kind of have to deal with the love as opposed to the hate. So absorb the negativity, transform it, and send it out into the world as positivity. It's like alchemizing, alchemize, exactly. alchemize the energy that they send you away. Um, okay, I think might be good to move on to uh, another point I've been thinking of, which is um, there's a whole theory of having universal law, mm. the natural law, and that includes uh, free will. Mm. So even in religious texts, God has given us free will to choose. And something I've been reflecting on recently is us being on this earth, mm. being able to choose what we do. So like you said, we have the choice to be like, look, I don't want to be impacted by voodoo. I don't believe in that. I don't consent. I don't condone. Mm. And, and it can't affect you in that way. And I've been reflecting recently on the very bad things that the government, let's say, are doing or the elite or so-called. And mm. it makes you think, OK, so how are they bypassing this natural law um, of free will? Mm. And then I kind of thought, you know, I think they are putting that information out there for people to see. So that kind of covers their back for when it comes to natural law. They're like, look, the information's there. We've given you a phone with all the information. So for everybody that's choosing not to see, mm. you're basically using your free will to say, you know what, I don't want to see it. I don't want to do my research. Mm. And that kind of bypasses it. The question is, um, there's a lot of people out there who seem to be ignorant and they don't want to wake up to it. Mm. Um, and I was wondering, do you think these people... Are they kind of born without that sense of awareness mm. for the universal depths and stuff? Or do you think everybody has the ability to awaken? Um, or are some people just kind of like soulless NPCs and there's like no hope for them? Or how, how, do, how do you think that, that mm. works? Or what's your... Yeah, are so, you getting the so, thoughts? Yeah, I've got you. Yeah. I've got you. There's a lot you said there. Um, I think you have to first start off with when people say free will. What, what's the definition of that and where they're getting that from? If you're looking at it from a religious or biblical or Quranic perspective, then it actually isn't free because you get punished for making a decision that doesn't go in line with what God, you know, Allah or, you know, Yahweh or any of these beings are telling you to. So you say it's free, but then when you choose to exercise your will 
in contrary to what they want you to do, then, then you go to hell or you get punished. So free will, we have to define what that actually really means. Yes, you do have the ability to, to choose and to go back to your question about the governments and things like that. What you have to remember is that the government only has power or control because the people give it to them. Now, if you go to the Bible and the devil was like, he's going to make evil fear seeming. So all he does is make, he merely puts the signs in front of you and you make the choice. Because ultimately, at the end, when he's been judged, he's going to say, but I didn't force them to do it. So take the example of smoking cigarettes, which someone can say is bad for me. And someone else can say it's good for me because it helps me with stress, etc., etc. So the devil now who produces that will put on the packet smoking kills. So now when you go to the shop and you buy the cigarettes and you read it and it says, smoking kills. Now they're even putting pictures on there that shows you with someone with a bad lung or a bad liver and everything. If you still choose to buy it and smoke it, you've made that choice, even though you were told the harms that it can cause. So yes, the devil is smart because all he does is he puts a symbol out. The foods that are out there, you can choose to eat it or not to eat it. You can choose to drink alcohol and whatever you take in. So it's really down to you. Now, they're smart because, as you say, some people, they just don't know. They're unaware of the harms because it's made to look like it's good. It's cool to smoke. It's cool to do this and do that. So the, the education um, helps you to awaken your real being, your spirituality and, you know, who you really are. So, like, some people may have never come across information. So, yeah, this is what we're doing and the job that we do is to teach because teaching people gives them the opportunity to make a decision for themselves. And if more people were aware of, say, the agendas that the government might be trying to roll out, they can then make a decision. And if the majority or most people um, kind of rebel against something, they will change it. Because they can only be in power if the people, because that's, you know, governments are based on we the people. We, we elect the or the government officials into power so you can actually like you know what i mean make them not win elections and things so the power is with us but the thing is over the years people have been dumbed down to not know their rights not know you know the power within them how to actually exercise that so I don't know if I answered all your questions because it was a lot <laughs> yeah yeah no so that answers everything uh, but I will just come back to one of the points which is do you think everybody has it in them to awaken and have the the capacity to contemplate these things mm -hmm. or do you think there's some people out there that are considered npcs or mm. just don't have it in them to ever even yeah. reach those sort of yeah, yeah. Uh, i would say both um, in the sense that everybody that is a natural being has that but what i say natural because these days they can they can be like cyborgs, hybrids, um, robots, and you won't even know the difference between real people and fake people. Um, so, yes, every natural person has the ability to, you know what I mean, be awoken with the right keys, with the right information, but um, how they take it or how far they elevate to is, is down to them. So, yes, everybody does have the opportunity and the ability to, but it it's down to them how far they take it. Mm, yeah, mm. I think that's very well answered. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think the next question we'll go towards is um, a concept called gang stalking, spiritual gang stalking. Have you heard of such a concept? Gang stalking? Yeah. Um, I, so no, make, okay, so I'll, um, you explain to Yeah, me? I'll explain it in, in the kind of terms that I understand it in. So it's, it's basically kind of, have you seen the movie Matrix? Yes, I have. So it's kind of like that concept where you have an individual who is awakening mm. and they're starting to vibrate higher, they're doing better things, they're trying to see the light and, and spread the light. And then the so-called agents, mm. they kind of pick that up on their sense and they're like, look, we've got to do something about it. Mm. So they start sending you things and entities and energies and yes. bad things from every angle to try mm -hmm. to keep you down. So um, the, the gang stalking idea is that these entities can come through any family member, mm -hmm. any relative, work, mm -hmm. friend, partner. It can also come through, let's say, like um, 
the, the TV license man just showing up at your door and mm. not leaving you alone. And from every angle, you yes. will be kind of hammered down. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those things that if you talk about it, people say you're crazy, yeah. um, which then you get institutionalized and it starts a whole other thing. Mm. Um, it, yeah, it's one of those interesting concepts. When I discovered it, I was like, whoa, mm. myself and a lot of people that I know can resonate with this. Mm. But when I mentioned it to a few people, they're like, yeah, don't talk about that because you might even get flagged up even more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just wondering, yeah, what are your, yeah. your um, thoughts on that? Now you've explained it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I may not have used that particular term, but yeah, this is what we explained that you have... Literally, the Matrix, like you said, explains it. Those are agents, you know, they just morph into, you know, it might be a taxi driver and then he just moves into Agent Smith. <laughs> and so, yes, it's very real. Um, you will be attacked from every angle, mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, it can come as a, a, a paycheck. It can come as a, a student grant. It can come as a job. It can literally come as anything. But the thing is, going back to the point before, depending on how you are, this is always the key, always comes back to you. Um, you can have something called a psychic self-defense. You can be vibrating higher than they can reach. So no matter what they're coming with, because you are on a higher vibration or a higher level, it won't affect you. So yes, but it's a, it's a constant thing. You've got to constantly be aware. That's why your every moment's vibration, your every moment's thought is so important because then they can't penetrate you. But it only takes a few seconds for for them to um, put you in a situation where you forget and then they're in mm. um, until you're able to kind of like deal with it and come back again and wake up. So um, the concept of like the fallen demiurge god mm. that's been um, sort of masqueraded and rebranded and repackaged as the god that most of the... Uh, Abrahamic religions worship mm. and so on and so on. So, um, looking at, like, let's say the Old Testament and how God mm -hmm. is portrayed there, mm -hmm. how vicious he is, the kind of murder that, and sacrifice that he, you know, he's doing, that he asks for, and then, you know, he's been like rebranded as well in Islam. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, Allah, they say he is like a moon god rebranded. Mm. Um, and that kind of concept was very interesting for me when I first discovered it, mm. because I came from a perspective of worshipping God, mm -hmm. loving God. And then when I looked at it on the flip side, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What? I think they're onto something here. Mm. And then when I went down that rabbit hole, um, I realized a lot of it does make sense. But it's, again, one of those things where it's both things. Um, what is the truth? Will I ever know? But um, yeah, I'd like to hear your opinions on that. The kind of biblical Abrahamic God mm. being a fallen demiurge where he's actually basically the devil in disguise as mm. God. And there is one true infinite creator God, but that is not the God that is in these um, holy texts, let's say. Okay. What's your um, opinions? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you said there is one true infinite God. Um, Again, uh, you know, we'll have to explore what you mean by that, who that is, because the thing about the Abrahamic religions is, is funny because they all recognize Abraham as their patriarch. So Muslims, Christians and Jews come from the same root. So how they can have differences doesn't make sense, because if their father is Abraham, um, and again, it depends on whether or not you subscribe to these religions, because... Like, how far back do they go? Because, you know, Islam's only 1,400 years old. Um, and that's really tiny in the length of time when you look at the planet and things that have existed, cultures, etc. Um, the life and times or the New Testament's 2,000 years old. Abrahamic religions with the Hebrew or the Old Testament, that's like 4,400 years old. Altogether, that's like 6,000 years old. But you have cultures and beings and people that predate all of them, you know, like the, the Zoo Aztecs, the Mayans, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, um, the Chinese, um, the Dogons, you know, you can go on and on. And this goes back millions of years. So, yes, the these gods of the Bible and the Quran, when you start to look at it, they come from the Sumerian texts mainly, um, which is the Gilgamesh epics, the... Uh, you know, the Sumerian, many Sumerian tablets like the Atrahasis, the Enuma Elish, um, so many of them which they've found. But 
for, for me or for us personally, in terms of what I subscribe to, which is Wu Sabat, we know that we predate all of them going back to ancient African spirituality and culture. And when you end up in like what people call ancient Egypt, they tie back to the stars. And so we know that we're, we're from outside the planet. People term extraterrestrials. And some of these extraterrestrials are the ones that are coming in in the Bible and people are calling gods. And because they have conflicts, you have good and bad, where you get the terms like Yahweh, Yah's good and Way is bad, or cherubim and seraphim, um, you know, good angels, bad angels. They war with each other and have even Enlil and Enki. Um, you know, you can go on Jacob and Esau, like there's just war in between two, two sides or two people. And some of them are doing bad things in the biblical scriptures and um, some are doing good things. So this is why it's like God is a schizophrenic because he's confused. One minute he's all loving, like you said, you were, you're asked to worship or to love him, but you're like, why does God need love? Why does God need to be worshipped? Because if you are the creator of everything and you own everything, it's like that concept doesn't make sense because why does God need emotions? Why is God grieving? Why is God jealous? Why is God having these attributes that are clearly um, lesser beings? You know, so that whole thing is, is, is a misconception of different beings um, that have come here from different constellations and different places and they have conflicts with each other and it gets translated into the Bible and into the Quran as, you know, God, Allah. But when you start to break down the words, you get different names and they're actually different beings. Like I said, it's Ba will be Enlil, Yahweh will be Enki. And then when you go to other cultures, you see the same thing happening. So you go to the Sumerians, you have like um, Damuzi, Ishtar, Tammuz. You know, you go to ancient Egypt, you're going to have Bes and Patar and you know, all the different families that are having wars and fighting. So it's good for people to do research and study because it kind of, you know, clarifies a lot of misinformation. Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay, interesting. Um, I think my next question will be sort of um, on the evolution of man. Mm. Where has man come from specifically on this earth? So yeah. um, I went to a uh, art gallery yesterday and they had the the evolution of man from fish to monkey to so on to so on to, to modern human mm -hmm. and um they had the the missing link which mm -hmm. is missing so they haven't a modern sign hasn't confirmed what the missing link is where it went from monkey to modern man mm -hmm. um and they on the tree of cavemen evolving into modern man there are so many different routes that went down and they ended up you know stopping there and only one version developed into modern man and there's a theory that I heard, which kind of goes with the Enlil and Enki story of, you know, aliens kind of finding this planet and they're like, oh, look, there's so many animals here. Let's pick the smartest one that already knows to use tools, mess with their DNA mm. and see if we can create someone to worship us and work for us and, and you know, basically be our slave in a way. Mm. So they, the story goes that they messed around with the, the DNA of the, the monkeys and mm. they created so many different versions that didn't work, hence why they scrapped it and the one final modern man came about and, you know, they taught them how to procreate between themselves and so on and so on. And that story is actually my personal favorite on how mm. humans came about to be on this earth. Whether I want to believe it or not, I yeah. don't know, but I like it and I think it makes the most sense actually for me. So I'd like to hear your story of how did humans get here? Mm. Where from, how, when, where? Yeah, um, again, <laughs> it's a very, very interesting um, subject. When we say modern man, um, again, it's like the current studies by anthropologists, because a long time ago, people thought everybody came from one source. So that would be the whole Adam and Eve story. And then everybody came from Adam and Eve. But with, like you say, DNA studies, and they actually um, carried out a project to try and, you know, answer this. And so anthropologists, basically studied and took DNA and now what they're telling to, telling us is that that was wrong because when they did the human genome project they realized that there are actually three different strands and not one and they kind of evolved separately so what they're saying is that if you look at the races on the planet you have like 
the oldest being the African, which they term as being the Homo naledi or the um, Homo habilis. That will put all sort of the African Negroid stock in one. And then you have the um, what they will call the Asian stock. So that would be Chinese and Koreans and all the Asian. Um, they call that the Denisovan and the Homo florensis. And then the third one would be the Neanderthal, uh, the Cro-Magnon, which would be like all of the, the Caucasians. So this is why when people said everyone came from the same place, it didn't make sense because you had different skin colours, different what people call hair textures, different blood types. And it was like, well, if we all came from one, why do we have these differences? So the latest in information now um, through the study is that there are actually different strands, three separate strands. And so depending on which strand you take, you can trace it to its origin. Um, and so that kind of cl clar clears that question up. Um, but in terms of what you said about fish and all of that, yes, if you go back for further enough to when there wasn't what we call the humanoid form on land, on, on the planet, then the planet was a water planet. And even that in itself, you have to say, how did the planet come about? Which goes into a bigger story. <laughs> but let's go to the point where the planet was a water planet. Because even when Genesis picks up, um, it's talking about God was on the surface of the, of the deep. When you break down the word deep, it's talking about water. And, um, you know, there's a movie called The Deep, which deals with the, the oceans and the water. So life did start from the waters and then it came onto land. Um, but the, the genes or the, ger the, the, the water was germinated from things that came from outside the planet. This is what's referred to as panspermia, which is, it could be meteorite, um, basically bacteria or anything that's coming from outside into the water to germinate the water. And over millions and millions and millions of years, things evolved. And then there were things like tsunamis that, um, you know, took things out of the water, flew them onto, flung them onto land, and some couldn't get back to the water, so they had to kind of adapt. Um, but yeah, so the dolphins would have been those original beings that um, kind of came and they're related to man because when you start to look at DNA and how the DNA of the dolphin relates to humans you can see that you know you can see the relation so yes life did evolve from the seas onto land and then over millions and millions of years you had different beings or extraterrestrials coming from different places and taking that which was evolving naturally mixing their DNA so this is where the Anunnaki story comes in, where they were looking for gold and they were, you know, going through the universes and they just happened to, through an accident, discover this planet, came here and took that w which was evolving and they added their genes and created what they call in the text primitive worker or Alulu Amilu. And this is where they wanted that being to be a slave or to work the mines um, and to get the gold. And because they couldn't really do it. They found the work and the atmosphere on this planet too hard for them. But that's just one strand. Now, if you went to, like, say, the Asians, you would have, they would tell you their, their ancestors come from Nirvana. And they came here and, you know, they settled in what people call India or Bali. And that's one, another strand. And then you have, like, the Pleiadians and, you know, beings that came from, like, um, you know, with the Ashtar command and things like that that were visiting, say, Hitler, and that's another strand where they created the Nordic. So there's lots of different ways or how people on the planet are related to the extraterrestrials and how they've evolved. Yeah, but originally um, the DNA or the genes would have had to come from the original beings that evolved here first. And this is where, like I said, the, the, the anthropologists are now able to trace the different races and different people to, to okay. those. Yeah. That's very interesting. I've not really heard of the, the free yeah. kind of tribes concept explain how you explain it. So that's very interesting. Um, that brings up a question then. So genetically and obviously visually, you can see the, the, the differences. Yeah. Um, would you say there are differences in, um, in these free tribes spiritually, right? The, the DNA that you carry spiritually, obviously to... A recent years extent there is because mm. you know they say like your your traumas and your your history and your ancestors you carry that through your dna mm. but looking back from when this all first started out would you say 
everyone's DNA makes them spiritually different, which then would lead on to the next question of um, the concept of like confusion of faces, where mm. everyone's kind of intermixed now. Mm. Um, and there's so many, uh, you know, new children being born who are mixed with different tribes and different everything. Yeah. And then if that does have a spiritual difference, what does that mean for like the new generation of, of the children? Mm. Again, that, that takes us to the whole study of genetics. Um, and when, once you study genetics, you will find out that you have, that deals with hereditary. So things come from things that come from things that come from things. And you have the father of genetics known as Gregor Mandel, who started the study. And then, as I said, um, in 1953 until the year 2003, when that human genome project was complete, this is what they were able to do to study genetics and study the genes. So it will always be like the most potent is going to be the strongest. And then it can get weaker with dilution or like, like making more hybrids is like if you took juice that you had to dilute with water, if you only added a little water to, say if you took like, a number, let's say three cups, and you put the most juice in one, and then you put half of that into the other cup, poured a lot of water into it, and then you, you, know, you put the rest into the last cup and pour a lot more water, then it's gonna get weaker. But they're all still gonna be related because the original potency of that you know, juice, is going throughout all of them. So yeah, it's about um, yeah, it's about genetics. And really, if you then took say, okay, so if we look at us and we look at the color of our skin, everyone has melanin, right? But um, Negroids or African stock will have more melanin because they produce more of it. So when they're in the sun, the sun tends to produce more melanin. Everything else and everyone else does have melanin, but not as much you see and you can do that with every trait um, so what they're doing now is going okay in modern times who would be that original that goes to the sans people of south africa because everyone's um, genetic traits can be found in them you know so um yeah so they would be like the most potent and then every other race on the planet comes from them with different traits yeah, so that's how I would look at it. Okay, um, so I've got another interesting question. Um, Sorry, I didn't touch on the spirituality you said about yeah, spirituality. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, so everything has, when we, this is another thing, because when you say spirituality, if someone is from a religious point of view or mindset, that means something completely different to them. But um, as I've broken down before, spirit, Everything has a spirit. Everything that is alive has a spirit. Everything vibrates. Um, trees have spirits, rocks have spirits, animals have spirits. But there's a difference between having a spirit to having a soul, because this is another thing that people get confused about, because in the Bible, um, they, they've got two words, spirit and soul, but people kind of mix them up or use them interchangeably. So. Um, a, a dog, a cat, a tree, a rock is vibrating, but it doesn't have the emotions that we have, as in that's what gives you the soul. Like you can, you're, you're more animated, you can like um, maybe dance, you can have empathy, you can have emotions, um, which is a bit different from, do you know what I mean, just things that are just objects and animated. So yeah, so everything has a spirit. Yeah, but again, it depends on how much, as a person, as a, a being that we move and we, we are able, to, we're different from rocks and animals and things like that because we do have a soul and you can, um, you can grow that or choose to nurture it. And ultimately, when you go beyond people, places and things, you get into energy anyway, and there's different levels of energy. So this is where, you know, we have what we call nine ether, which will be, well, ether will be like the most powerful form of energy, which contains every other form of energy within it. So when you transcend the skin or the, the flesh, you start to deal with your spirit, you start to deal with your soul, then you're going into different levels of vibrations or higher energy, you see. So people who are more um, elevated in their mindset, they know that this is just a skin suit. And this skin suit can be occupied or worn by any 
higher vibrating entity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the other question I had was uh, relating to that. So um, when I was actually walking past uh, past the shop, I um, walked past and um, I was like, oh man, this shop looks so cool. And then I looked and I was like, oh, what? I, I, looked at my skin and I was like, oh, I, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to go in there. Like, how will I be welcome and so on and so mm. on. And uh, my personal experience is obviously going into certain places because I grew up in Tottenham. Mm. Uh, a lot of my friends were, uh, you know, quite melanated and they was doing all these things. And, you know, it came to a point where they're like, oh, it's actually not appropriate for you to come because you're one of the colonizers, so on and so on. Mm. So you can't come to these events. So, you know, I had to come uh, always double check whether it was OK for me to come or not. Mm. So that kind of brings me to a point where... There's a lot of spiritual tools out there, spiritual books, spiritual places, and it, it makes me question, like, how do you know whether it's appropriate for you as, like, a different coloured person, whatever, on the outside? Mm. Um, is it relevant for you to practice, read about it, mm. touch it, read it? You, do you know what I'm... Yeah, yeah, I'm with It's you, hard I'm to express it because it's one of those um, things that's, like, quite obviously mm. uh, triggering for me because yeah. I, I've been there, done that. And it's obviously one of those things as well. Like my son, he's, um, his dad is Uganda. So people mm. are like, oh, your mum can't come, mm. but can one of your aunties bring you? And it's, it's kind of, yeah, so it's interesting. So all these things I see your shop, I'm like, what is appropriate for me to take? What mm. is appropriate for me to eat? What is appropriate for me to read? And what should I leave? Mm. As obviously clearly not a very melanated person. See, that's the difference with us. Um, we'll sabat is vibrating on a higher level. So when you try, like I said before, when you transcend in terms of your consciousness and um, mentality, you're not really dealing with people, places and things. And so we don't discriminate against anyone. Anyone who subscribes or wants to accept Wusabat is free to practice it in every way, in the way that, you know, we do. Um, there's no differences. Um, because we we are about uplifting humanity, and so you know it's like if if you're a loving, caring God or deity, why would you then restrict or like limit people from what they can do? That that doesn't actually doesn't actually make sense. However, you have to remember, as you said, it's imprinted in the DNA where, as you said, the colonizers or like certain Europeans and certain people did some horrific things by, you know, the slavery and going into other cultures and doing certain things. So that's also imprinted in the um, melanated beings DNA. And it takes, uh, um, it's like, we can't do to people what we say they did to us because we just become them. Like if, if, if I'm saying somebody did devilishness or wickedness to me, and then I do the same to them, I've just become them. So we don't have that um, when, when you're vibrating on a higher level, but there are some people who haven't come to that kind of like terms yet. So they still remember the traumas and all the things that, you know, that took place. So they will be very skeptical or cautious or aware like, okay, how can I trust you fully? But that comes down to you yourself. Um, you know, we have all kinds of races and people in our community and you know, you just have to be the best that you can be and that's it. And people will accept you for, for who and what you are. So we don't teach racism. We don't really practice that. We do teach that. We teach the facts and some people can handle the facts and deal with the facts and some can't. And um, it's for everyone, really. Wusabat is really for everyone. So I'm not sure if I've missed out anything, if I have, remind me because, uh, yeah, so you said about the mixture between you and, say, your husband your offspring's gonna have both of you. And your husband's being from Uganda's genetics are gonna be stronger than yours. But your child is gonna be both of you. But when you deal with genetics, the dominant genes are still gonna be your husband's genes, you see. So your child is still its own entity. Now, obviously, what you to teach that child, and it's about, like Martin Luther King said, is. You don't judge a man by the colour of their skin, you judge them by the contents of their character. So it doesn't matter whether you've got them people with black skin or melanin that do worse things than some people that don't have melanin. So it's about 
you as a being and what what do you bring to the world what do you resonate what energy do you bring do you bring love do you bring happiness do you bring misery you know so it's really always come down to you as a being and um, if you carry yourself in that way that's what you're going to resonate you know so yeah it's like if you ever came to this shop and just stayed here for like maybe a whole day you'd be surprised and amazed about of the types of people that come in here because we get mm. all kinds of people coming here and when you walked in, um, I'm sure you felt welcome and, and at home. Yeah, 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 I did. You guys were sweet to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't buy it. We, do, we give the information, but at the end of the day, um, if you can stand the truth, really because really it's about the truth. Facts are facts. Facts are facts. You can't yeah. deny certain exactly. things, which I think some people might obviously want to be like, oh, yeah. downplay or so on. But yeah, facts are facts. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that anyone and everyone has to reckon and deal with that. If they can, if they can't, then it goes down to vibration. I think I did a video recently um, called From 3D to 9D, which is I'm basically saying like you can be stuck in a three dimensional world and just be a robot and just subscribe to the programming of, you know, the powers that be. Or you can choose to look beyond it and be like, that doesn't make sense. Use your mind to make decisions as opposed to just following like sheeple you know just mm. following blindly because you don't take the time like you said you've got smartphones now um people think oh i've got a smartphone but a smartphone is not meant to be smarter than you so you can google and research <laughs> and check things and, and actually like make your own decision because ultimately without you nothing would exist the phone wouldn't exist mm. god wouldn't exist nothing would exist so you are that god that got to make decisions that are best for you and your peoples and your family yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that um, makes me think of this quote where they say, um, uh, "Beyond is it beyond good and evil? There is a field. Meet mm. me there." Um, and it sounds like the way the way you're explaining things is that um, there is, the, like you said, the sheeple, mm. the people, the herd mentality that are kind of subscribing to the the mainstream media, the, the mainstream things that they're being fed. Yeah. And then there is the woke gang now who's mm. like we're woke you, you know and they're they're kind of now actually falling into another trap where they're still asleep because they're following the agenda that's going against the mainstream mm. um so you know the mainstream might be like you know talking about the tr traditional family and then the agenda might be like look you can identify as anything you want even mm. as a tree and now you know um uh, there was a post i saw this morning you know not being able to call a pregnant person uh, uh, a woman they mm. have to call them pregnant folk because you know they might right. not identify as a woman and so on and so on so then i feel like yeah um you fall into that whole new level of mm. sleep yeah. where you think you're woke mm. and you're woke but you're really not you're now falling into the other trap yeah. and then there is a field beyond which That's is when right. everybody comes together they're like oh now do you see mm. there is more to this or that there's actually a whole field yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you realize that it, it's it's nothing so yeah i'd like to kind of Maybe hear your, your thoughts and opinions mm. on those two and then what is in the field beyond. Yeah. So, like, going back to this whole um, fictitious, you know, creation that the powers that be put together to, to even, like, right now, you know, there's a lot of um, racism and things like that going on. Um, and as I said, you know, one of our saying is no one wins the race and racism. So it's not a black and white thing anymore. It's a grey thing. Um, that's actually in terms of extraterrestrials that people call the greys <laughs> who have been running and controlling the world and so on through these puppets that people call leaders and government officials um, yeah so it's actually funny what you said because I meet people like that all the time that they come and you have a conversation and they're like I'm awoke I don't need to know this I know it all I've been and you're listening to them and you're like okay the person that thinks they know it all knows nothing you know the man that you know, that's what they say, you know, like you're, you're always going to be better in the state of I'm learning, I'm still learning. I don't know everything because nobody does. Um, so it's like, yeah, seek knowledge from cradle to grave. But you're right that you do have that whole thing of, you know, I can identify with anything. But does it make sense? This is what goes back to me saying use your own mind as what we call nine mind, which is like reasoning. Because thinking is the lower level. Everyone can think. Some people think they're thinking, but they're not actually thinking because they're receiving thoughts and messages that they're relaying and they think those are their own. But 
they are actually not. They're being programmed. So when you discern, when you have the ability to discern information, which is reasoning, does it make sense? How can you identify and say, I'm a tree and you're not a tree? You know, make it make sense. Like, I'm a bench. <laughs> and like, okay, <laughs> define bench, define tree. Like, if you're a tree, go and stand in one place and never move and just stay there. Do you know what I mean? So you have to use your mind to really think, okay, does, does this make sense? Because, you know, there have been incidences when you start to deal with things from a moral perspective, like, imagine I can be a man, commit a crime, and then change my identity to be a woman. So then I get put into a woman's, say, prison, because I'm now a woman. But then I rape or do something crazy to women because I'm really a man, but I just use that as a way to not go into a, you know, the prison for men. So it gets into a level of confusion and you have to say, where's this all coming from? And this again ties into the extraterrestrials because they have mm. an agenda. And the ones that are predominantly running the planet right now are the beings from Andromeda and they, they are androgynous. So they, it, it's in their interest to push that agenda because that, that's, that's what they want to promote. So you have to make it make sense because yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind people. Th there's always different levels to everything. So, so for example, when you start to look at gender, um, obviously, traditionally, people who identify as male and female, which is really the XX chromosome for female and the XY for male. The Y is actually a defective X because one of the stems is broken off. So a man will have things that a woman has, but because a man is a limited being, so we might have mammary glands, but we won't use them to, to breastfeed. So, but there are different genders outside of the XX and XY, where you have like hermaphrodites and hermaphrodites who are beings that can have both sexual organs. And, and even on a spiritual level, you can have a, a physical male body, but have a female spirit and vice versa. So you can have a female physical body and have a male spirit. Now, people who have this going on in them and they haven't been taught about this, they get confused because, say, I may be a man physically, but I feel like a woman inside because I have a, sp a female spirit. That doesn't mean that I should become a woman, but those feelings, those conflicts, if people don't know about these kind of things, then they might go, I need, to, I need to change my physical to match how I feel on the inside. And this is the level of information that Wu Sabat starts to teach people. Then you have people who are just confused in terms of mm. their gender, like they, they, they want to experiment, like, you know, with different sexes. And that comes down to they're just maybe oversexed. So you have those who will sleep with anything, whether it's, you know, animals, people, male, female, and that's completely, that's different from being homosexual, it's hormone sexual, because their hormones are all over the place. So yeah, it's really about people being educated or having the knowledge to know that it's okay if you feel like a man on the inside, you may just have a male spirit, mm. but you have a physical body. So these are the types of things. So there's different levels of things that are going on. So you have to look at each situation. Why is this person behaving or wanting to change their, you know what I mean, their sexuality or their physical appearance? Yeah, yeah you so. know, I, I like what you said there. I feel like I, I definitely agree with you on that because I've always felt like there's a lot of people who are genuinely having that internal struggle. Mm. And then there is the other people who are just taking the external confusion mm. and internalizing it and they're just easily swayed like even myself i'm thinking of my teenage years mm. i was we like wearing trainers you know i was wearing like shoes i was dressed yeah. like a tomboy mm. if i had the kind of agenda that's pushed now pushed on me then i probably would have been like you know what maybe i'm supposed to be a man mm. but that's different to actually like you said having the the, the sort of male female spirit within mm. you that's sort of making you question things yeah um, so yeah i really like how you phrase that it's um makes a lot of sense and yeah i like what you were saying about the different sort of planetary councils intergalactic councils mm. that's kind of uh, taking charge of the planet and so on and so on that's always been an interesting concept for me mm. uh, so i'd like to ask about um there's a whole big thing of uh hollywood mm. the occult 
and the whole link to Saturn. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was researching some of these intergalactic councils, there was one theory um, by these guys that channeled uh, Law of One, Ra. Uh, mm. I don't know if you've heard of them. So they, they were basically saying that even some of the good guys, they all have their offices or bases in some of the octave rings around Saturn. And I thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of Saturn symbolism, again, in a lot of religions mm. and a lot of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to kind of hear your opinion <laughs> on that little yeah. little big section there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, it goes back to, as I was saying, who's running the planet and what's their agenda. And like you say, Saturn, you can hear phonetically, Satan kind of relates. And um, you, you have to think, okay, the occult and this whole like Saturn or Satan and you go back to people like that um, like the Church of Satan for example Anton Levy yeah he was actually given the license to have the satanic church in 1966 by the then president um, Ronald Wilson Reagan and you can hear the Ronald six letters Wilson six letters Reagan six letters and so you have, and there's a movie about the year Corona, 66 yeah, as well. Rosemary's Babies and all these things that goes into the occult and people who actually um, practice, like I said, remember at the beginning we were talking about they give their allegiance to the devil because they see the devil, the devil, as um, a good guy. So to them, they're not doing anything wrong because their power comes from the devil. And when you look at the word six, um, when you study languages, you look at vowels, A-E-I-O-U, you can interchange vowels. So when you say sex, six, it's the same word if you take, change the I for an E. So these um, beings, they, they, if you go back to the Bible as well, they feed these beings like blood sacrifices and they do certain rituals because they, these beings, they feed off of that energy. So... You know, you have been pe people that go to like the Bahama Grove and they worship the Baphomet and they get their power and everything from these extraterrestrial beings. So, yes, when, when you're saying that, um, you know, like Saturn and, and what you called it, you said some of them are good, but it depends on what you're defining as good because some people, mm. good and bad is subjective, you know. So the people who think I sell my soul, I get riches, I get money, I get fame, I get all of these things here on the planet. They, to them, that's a good thing. But then when it comes down to when they're about to leave here, as in expire physically, that's when it's important, like, where are you going in terms of this whole hell and heaven concept? And this is when people try to become more, more spiritual. So, yeah, this Hollywood thing, when you look at what is Hollywood, yeah, it's the the wood that Merlin the magician used mm. to cast spells. So when you go into all of that and look at the occult and start to look at what Hollywood does, what Hollywood does is it, it casts spells on the people. And that ties into the music industry, it ties into most of the entertainment industry because this is where they promise you to become a star, um, which is fire. But there's fire being used in a good way and fire being used in a bad way. This is why... Lucifer is referred to as the morning star. So these people, um, they promise to have this light and that light is referred to as being illuminated or the Illuminati, those who are enlightened. And so they're the ones that are running the planet and running the music industry and running the film industry. And what they do is they get to make a movie, they got to get a cast. Yeah, so they pick people <laughs> that are going to play and execute this spell because they write a script. Mm. A script is written with words. And so they get people who can be really fake. They can cry at a moment's notice. And when they're acting, they're so convincing that when you're watching the, the movie, you forget that it's a movie because there's a, a puppet master pulling the strings and it gets into your emotions and it gets you to basically, you know, like if it's a singer, they become your idol. It, I-D-O-L or I-D-L-E. You see, like, they play on words. And so you become idle because you kind of give yourself to them. You want to follow them. Everything they do, everything they say, 
you know, they say, buy this, wear this, the brands come in, you see. So yes, um, Hollywood is, is just a, a way that they use to cast spells and the people who sell their soul to be a part of this, they get a star in Hollywood on the ground and that's the fire that they start to kind of like burn in hell because it's about desires. Everybody wants to, you know, be rich and famous and then that lifestyle, you get introduced to other things and then it just gets worse as you get pulled into the, to the rabbit hole until you start to hear all these things that, you know, they're talking about like sacrificing children mm. and paedophilia and all kinds of stuff that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's deep, isn't it? Yeah, oh, you're man. scratching, they're scratching. Damn. We're going in. I'm going to get flagged up, man. <laughs> no, there's a lot of things, but I think we might need to do a part two because yeah. I'll see how much they flag me up after this one, innit? <laughs> but, but this is what I'm saying. Who's the they and why do they want to flag do you up? Do you know what? Interesting, yeah, yeah because yeah. I've, I've been in a lot of interesting places with a yeah. lot of interesting people. Yeah. But I feel like I've always had that kind of shield around where I'm like, look, I'll look, mm. but I'm not participating. And it somehow, yeah, I've been in a few places where I've seen a lot of questionable things and yeah. I can see why people get sucked in mm. uh, because they come with, like you said, promise of riches, fame, like anything you want. Mm. All we want is just, just your soul and your energy. Yeah. And luckily for me, I've got that strength to be like, look, I'm a sovereign being. I'm not giving my soul to anybody, mm. but I can see how a lot of people, especially times right now when, you know, they have the whole cost of living crisis mm -hmm. thing going on. I see how easily it could be like, you know what, mm. take my soul, I'd rather have the security for my family. Yeah. And yeah, it's quite scary to know. So maybe that brings me on to a point. Um, and can we just you... touch on what you just said there. Yeah, and you will it. have people that in their lyrics, they blatantly say, I sold my soul to the devil and the price was cheap. Yeah. And then this is the, the making um, evil face seeming again, because in the Bible, it says, what profits a man to gain the whole world but to lose their soul. Mm. So yeah, you can gain the whole world, which is just material things at the yeah. end of the day. And then, yeah, lose the your soul. The smoke and mirrors. The smoke and mirrors. But the soul Not is everything that glitters way. is gold. Yeah. yeah. Um, the question that I have, um, can you participate in these sort of, let's say like events or scenarios or situations with these sort of people, um, but still have your soul intact and have like a protective shield around you and kind of so for myself I'll, I'll give mm. an example I'm a knowledge seeker mm. um I um went to like this Freemason museum was just you know researching doing my research reading the books mm. um and then you know it's after a while somebody said oh would you like to join mm. and I was like oh and you know, the spiritual seeker in me is like, oh, I, mm. I really want to see for myself what you guys are doing <laughs> yeah. behind them closed doors. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to join because I don't know what will happen. Mm. So taking that situation, uh, yeah. I, I didn't end up joining, by the way. <laughs> Just, yeah. uh, but again, <laughs> these people are going to be disputing that. Da, 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 da. Mm. Anyways, uh, I didn't end up joining, but it's just been one of those things where I, I still question. I'm like, man, mm. I, and I wonder, like, can you join and participate in these things? but still have a way to keep your soul intact just for like spiritual research or just mm. worldly research or even to maybe gain like you know if you participate with these people yeah. get the contacts and leave but still have your soul and spirit intact mm. if your you know protection is strong enough is that possible yeah i mean that's that goes back to what i said that ultimately you're god and mm. you're the one that makes the decision so it depends on you how strong you are because um people think that it's, it's, you can't put your head in, you know, in the sand and just be hidden from everything because you're still here. You still have to experience things. You still have to participate in the world. But in the scriptures, it says, be in the world, but not of it, mm. right? So you have to remember that. And so when, say, for example, somebody might be a really talented musician or singer or whatever, and they want to be, you know, making music, but they don't want to really get involved with all the crap that goes on. This is where your knowledge of the industry and the music. So, for example, you will sign a contract. But well, most people wouldn't even see that the word is con. You're, you're, getting, con <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting cons Whoa. into something. I never realised that. Yeah, but if you don't know about contract law and you don't study the contract and you don't have someone who's like a legal person to look through it, you're just getting excited. Mm. Oh, I'm going to get an advance. I'm going to get, I'm going to be, my, my music's going to be popping. I'm going to have music videos. But you get conned and now you've signed a contract and you can't get out of it. 
and they have told you in the contract, if we say take get plastic surgery, mm. you're gonna do it because you're our product, you belong to us. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying that to say now nah, going into the the other point about you know like knowledge. Yes. Um. The thing about Freemasonry and or m more like secret societies, the secret is there are no secrets. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and people that will hear me say this might be like, hmm. Yeah, because when you actually research and start to study and go into them, um, you will know, and, and the best teacher is experience. So yeah, you can go into, into anything as long as you know that you're strong enough to be like, I have my purpose of doing what I'm doing. And at the end of the day, it's just knowledge, you know, but then as you say, there will be a point where you will be put to the test or mm. be put in a position where are you going to compromise? So most people will be like rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous and, you know, they'll, you know, take you to exotic places and, you know, hotels and you live the good life and they might even say, yeah, take that car, have that and have that jewellery or whatever. And you just get sucked in. It's like music. Um, people just get sucked into wanting to be a star, not looking at it like, okay, I need to look at this as a business. Am I going to sell my soul? Who are the producers? Who are the people that are going to be like controlling my life? And yeah, so that's what happens. So I would say, yeah, study. We, we, if you're God, you shouldn't fear anything. Like literally, like even when you're saying, oh, they, they're going to, it's like, <laughs> you're giving them power. Like, it's true, it's true. They, what they, it's true. Am I in because, or out? I feel like one yeah, foot's in, exactly. one foot's out. And, and it's uh... like, at the end of the day, you're not doing anything wrong, right? Mm. And speaking truth is the best thing one can do. So if, as long as you're speaking truth, you're not harming anybody, you're, you're not really doing anything wrong. Why are they going to have an issue with mm. you? Yeah. Yeah, I think naturally, you know, people go through expansion and contraction just as mm. the heart does. Yeah. And I think myself, I've jumped, I'm just coming out of a phase where I've been contracted, mm. suppressing my truth. Mm. And that's when this opportunity came up to come and chat. I was like, you know, I'm going to take it. Yeah. And I had all these questions and I said, am I allowed to say? <laughs> we all say anything. I was like, are you sure? Yes, yes, yes. Because I've been in a state We got of, things say, ask us anything. I know, so. I know. But you know, it's, it's hard because even myself, I'm... I've spent all these years speaking out, but then I still go through contraction phases mm. where I'm like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. Who am I to disturb the status quo? And now I'm coming back to a place where I'm like, actually, mm. the truth is the truth. Let me speak it. And yeah. it's coming out my tongue. I can't even stop sometimes the truth just comes. Yeah. And yeah, it makes me think of, yeah, so many people out there that but also don't, have... Don't you see, that's what people get suppressed as yeah, a child yeah, yeah. from. Because when you're a child and mm. you're just... Do you know what I mean? Like you're you're not controlled by anybody. You just ask questions. Yeah. Mummy, why? Mummy, why? You don't stop because you just want to know. You want to absorb this environment that mm. you find yourself in. But then church and the mosque and school and and even some of the parents. Even the parents. Stop asking so many stop questions. Stop asking so many questions. Why are you asking so many questions? And then they start to suppress you, suppress mm. you to the point where you start to think there's something wrong with asking questions. Yeah. And then you in church it's like. You're blaspheming. How dare you ask God that question? Yeah, yeah I can ask God the question because God gave me the intelligence to think about the question. Mm. If he didn't want me to be able to ask that question, why does he make me think of it? Yeah. If you say he knows everything and he's the most powerful, omnipresent, omnipotent. And he's also the most loving and merciful. So exactly. surely I can ask, Surely right? I can ask the question, right? But no, because <laughs> they want to suppress you when you get to a point where you're asking questions they find uncomfortable mm. or that they don't know the answers to. Because yeah. it's about a control thing where the, the minister, the preacher, the imam or the person who's got the robes and the jewellery and is looking shiny. Like <laughs> he can't be seen to be not knowing a question that the lay person is asking. Mm. So to keep that status, they try to suppress everyone. So they look like, you know, they're, yeah. they're the intercessor or the, the person that has to speak to God to get the messages to come and tell you. But then you can speak to God directly yourself. Mm. So why do I need to go through you or someone else to get my answer? Mm. Yeah, because that fear thing comes with the Bible has taught you or the religious books have taught you that when you die, you're going to hell. You're going to be punished. So that fear is there. Like, but really, yeah, ask anything and um, don't fear anything because... Mm. The only thing to really be afraid of is fear itself. Because powers, if powers. you do know, 
put that. like <laughs> fire emojis and fire soundtrack on this. Yeah, because if you do know that you don't die, because <laughs> mm. energy cannot be destroyed, right? Yeah. So what is there to fear? Mm. It's the fear of death. People think it's the end and I'm done and I'm going to hell if I do the wrong thing. But who decides what's right and wrong? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, wow, man, that's that's left me in <laughs> contemplation mode. I'm yeah, like, yeah. wow, power. It will resonate. So power, don't that, think that, no that, oh, I'm gonna think of this on a whole <laughs> drive home. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? That that brings another question. So where you do have these these scriptures and so on, mm. a lot of it is useful information. Mm. And a lot of it I read it and I'm like, I don't see the relevance. Mm. Um, and myself as well, Catholic Church, I went there, questioned like Book of Genesis, you know, they talk about um, the, you know, the, the, the gods or the angels, the celestial beings intermingling with earth women. I asked about that. They said, mm. please don't come back. <laughs> please don't come back. <laughs> yeah. Three times I tried three different churches. They said, yeah. stop questioning, read John chapter 12. That's it. Don't yeah. question anything else. So it makes me question like, is all of the scriptures, like let's say the Quran, the Torah, the New um, Testament, Old Testament, is it all nonsense? Is it all great, amazing stuff that mm. is truly word of God? Or is it a mix and match that's a little bit distorted? What is like your opinion on mm. these? See, when you, say, when you books? say words like a lot, English is very misleading. It's very limited. It's such a yeah, because twisted what, what is language. A lot? Um, what I would say is, mm. having read all those, those books as well, is that, there's only literally about 10% of it that is factual or useful. Um, most of it is just plagiarized stuff because you've got to remember that none of these people have an original. Mm. There's no original Quran, no original Bible. Like if you go through the history of how, say, the Quran was revealed and put together, uh, it was like on bones and you know, mm. animal skins, and it was over a period of 23 years that it was revealed to this angel, Gabriel or Jabril, who was really a person, but that's a whole different story. Um, and it's the same when you look at, like you say, the Bible, these are just books that have been copied from books that have been copied from books mm. that have been copied from books. So it's been remixed all the time to the point where no one knows what the truth is because if they say that God's words are infallible, like God can't make mistakes. So if in the Old Testament he says something and he says not, even Jesus said, not one jot or tittle shall be removed or changed. So you can't have a New Testament because you're remixing or renewing God's mm. words, which will mean that now man has the opportunity to change things to suit what they want to do. You see, so the books, you have to think, existence was here before the books and the men came along and wrote the books. So what did you do before there were books? Mm. You still had to live. You still had to be able to, like, innately you know right from wrong. You, you do, because it's in, in your DNA. But um, these extraterrestrials are the ones that have confused everybody. Because it even tells you in the book of Genesis in chapter 11 that, you know, God came down and confound the tongues and then cause confusion in where they're called Babel. And that's the word Babel became Bible. And it literally means to babble, to just <laughs> talk confusion. And, and that's literally what it is. <laughs> After that incident, no one could understand each other or speak. Mm. And then it was just confusion. Everybody went in different directions because the God of the Bible, which was actually Enlil that came down and, um, and, you know, and because what happened is that Enlil and Enki and the Anunnaki, they were Nibiru sending like frequencies and messages to their slaves to do the work and be in order and all of that. And then Nimrod, the son of Kush, he went to Africa, he learned his father's language and then he came back and he started to organize the people and they started to speak in their own language and they started to build this tower to be able to communicate directly with God. And Endo was like, they're not obeying us anymore. What's going on? Like, let's go down there and see what's happening because their frequencies, the telepathy that they were using wasn't working. So they came down and they saw what was going on and they're like, no, nah, we can't have this. Let's, you know, confound their languages and scatter them all over the world. And that's what they did. And today, everyone is confused because of 
you know, th th these stories and these books. But if you go back to the Sumerian texts and to the, you know, the, the tablets that have been found, you get a clearer picture where, you know, these stories are coming from. But mm. yeah, ultimately, um, yeah, these gods are, they're frauds, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Summarize end line. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. No. I guess it goes back to the original point of like symbols. Like if you use it for good and if it resonates with you, mm. do your thing. And if not, drop it. Move yeah. on to the next thing. Some symbols are more powerful than others. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Um. Yeah. And then um, you know what else? I'm I'm looking at you now, and yeah. it, it's making me think of something else, um, which is the concept of time, mm. and. Everyone experiences, experiences time differently. So mm. there's the whole idea of like autobiographical memory. And then some people are really good at remembering everything. So they can be like, oh, last week I did this and this and that. And everything is clear in their minds. And mm. other people are more like, mm, I don't really know. I don't really. Mm. And there's no right or wrong, I think. It's just everybody experiences time differently. And then that goes to a point where in terms of aging mm. so there is the whole scientific concept uh, i can't remember the exact word now it's, it's like what alligators and crocodiles have where they don't actually age mm. they just kind of die from natural diseases or whatever um, mm. natural causes or diseases or whatever else so there is a whole concept of humans and aging yeah. and time that is just is, is such a interesting concept because I don't know how long we've been sitting here talking for. Has it been mm. 20 minutes or has it been 10 hours? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. The concept of time is so subjective. Um, and then that kind of goes to a point of aging. Mm. I'm looking at you and I'm like, if I had to pick an age, I'm like, I can't. You've got youthful energy. Mm. Physically, you look young. But I'm like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah. with, with people, um, and I think it, with a lot of spiritual people, especially that, that reach those levels, yeah. you look at them and you're like, mm. you just look youthful like mm. at all times like people don't age they just look like they just they Stuck just remain time. like that for two yeah, that's, thirty that's years you've seen excellent. them and other people yeah. you see them five years later you're like oh, you're yeah. looking tired like your mm. skin your eyes and everything you can really see them aging yeah. um so yeah i'd like to kind of yeah there's quite a few points yeah, yeah. like your your thoughts of uh people's perception of time and aging and mm. humans and yeah you as usual you, you know your questions are packed with so many different things but yeah it's great um so, yeah, first of all, you have to think about what is time, right? Because time is, there's different times. There's natural time mm. and there's fictitious time. So, natural time just flows, yeah? You arrive where you arrive when you arrive. But fictitious time has got you in this three-dimensional world, people, places and things. And you have to remember that the planet revolving around the sun is where you get your time from because it takes, they say, 365 days for the... Which time the... Fic for the planet to roll. The fictitious so, time or the, the natural fictitious time? One, the oh, fictitious one. The fictitious one. Okay. Yeah, to, to revolve, yeah? Because they then divide that 365 days into months, into weeks, into, you know, days, into hours, into minutes, into seconds. But you know it's fictitious because you can ask 10 people the time at the exact same moment and everyone's going to give you a different time. Some might be like one minute off, two minutes off or whatever because it's a concept that has been given to you because it's only based on the distance of the planet from the sun and the rotation that it makes and that's been divided because the planet has a, a 24,000 year um, circumference and so this way you get 24 hours and everything's down to 24 which goes back to the six again. But if you were, say, on another planet that was double the distance from the sun, so one day on that planet will be double, you see? So, mm. so a thousand years, as it says in the Bible to the Lord in Second Peter, it's like one day or one day is like a thousand years. So depending on what you understand of time, um, but yeah, your, the elements as well is what makes you age. But in terms of aging, if you're not trapped in this concept of time, because when you're trapped in the concept of time, you're constantly worrying and people are like on the rat race, constantly just like they're not calm and they're not relaxed. Natural time, as I said, is you looking at nature, looking at, you know, things, the nature just, you know, the, the seasons just flow and you can flow with it. So, yes, in terms of speeding you up, it ages you. And that's the way you think, everything that you're doing, that you're 
hurrying actually makes you age. And then on top of that, you've got the programming of your, your telomeres. Yeah, your telomeres are at the end of like, when, you know, when you look at the chromosomes, you got at the end of them the, your telomeres. The telomeres actually program for you to live a certain type of um, lifespan. And then obviously if you drink, if you smoke, if you eat wrong things, these things will also aid you. If you're like constantly not sleeping, um, there's so many things that we do to our body that messes your circadian rhythm and it throws you off. Because when you really look at you, you're a bunch of atoms held together. And when you speed up atoms or the vibration, they heat up and then, you know, you get, you get older. Like if you took meat and put it in the microwave and then the, the laser, which is heat, um, makes the, the molecules of the meat to vibrate and then it cooks or gets, you know. So, yeah, your diet, your mindset, just everything that you do um, reflects on you because you're externally as you are internally. Yeah, so... I've mm. seen that way. I've met some people that I haven't seen for a long time, and then you see them, you're like, "Wow!" Like because they haven't, they're not looking after themselves. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've, I feel like I've observed this in, in other people, right? Where you have uh, somebody, you know, we all say this fictitious time that you said 24 hours, we all get mm. the same standard. Uh, me, you, everybody else. Mm. Um, and what everybody does with that same 24 hours can be so different. So mm. I've seen people that just, you know, they do their nine to five, they go home, put on the TV, have their dinner, they go sleep. And then on the weekend, they'll go out and do something. Mm. And then you have other people who kind of somehow manage to make that 24 hours into about three or four days mm. worth of things. Yeah. So when you see that person at the end of the week, They'll They're have a productive. whole heap of stories. They're like, I did this, I did that. And mm. it's not even necessarily productive because sometimes okay. it's not even in terms of what you achieve, productivity, but they'll have so many experiences, so many different things that they do. And mm. somehow they manage to do all those things in one day because time kind of seems to work around them. Mm. So I, I, I don't know how they do it. So I've got like a friend where she'll be like, oh, I did this and this and that. And when I think about it, I'm like, how did you manage to travel from there to there to there? But mm. it's as if time is slowed down for her, mm. for her to have a whole three days worth of time mm -hmm. in one day, where somebody else just goes to work, comes back and the day's done. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'd like to hear your opinions on, is, is that a thing? Is that something we can all tap into where we manipulate time and have the same 24 hours yeah. last three or four days or however else to just kind of mm. expand and extend our lifespans in a way? Yeah, I mean, that's why I said that it's all down to you, meaning like if you travel to, say, other countries, to certain places, you literally feel like time has stopped. Mm. Like if you go to America, go to the deep south, or if you go to Jamaica, or you go to certain places and... A lot of the times, these are places where the sun is out. If you can mm. go to Spain or Portugal, and because when you're in a situation where they've got you on this thing that they call the rat race, even mm. though we're not rats, um, you're constantly moving fast, and you're you're basically you're oscillating so fast that it's affecting your vibration and your DNA and mm. your molecule. Now, in times of there's also something called time management. You know, when you go to work and certain, they they're very on time management because if you don't manage your time because time is the one thing that we all have that you can't get back so you will never get that time once it's gone so if you don't use your time wisely you're going to lose it so what you have to do is gauge or use your you know 24 hours gauge or that as you said you've got 24 hours it's like how do you break it down into doing things that are meaningful as you said not necessarily productive but like quality as mm. opposed to quantity, you know. So some people will enjoy their time. Like, you should enjoy the moment. Everything you're doing, because time is another thing where, like, you have then in the past, you have now, and you have then in the future. But you only live in the now, yeah? Meaning that every time I say now, it's no longer now. So people try to live in the then in the past or try to live in the then in the future where they have all of these plans of things they're going mm. to do. So they're worrying about things that haven't happened. And others, they are worrying about things that have already happened that they can't make any changes to. So it's, it's a waste of your energies when you're doing that. So if you focus on the now 
and just deal with moments. So whatever you're doing, if you're eating, you're enjoying that moment. If you're having a conversation with somebody, you're enjoying that moment because you never get, you're living at that moment, you see. So this is another reason how or why people age because they worry too much and stress and worries about things that have gone that you can't do anything about or things that have not yet to come, you can't do anything about. So why not just focus on the now? But you can make it so that every now counts. So by the time you look at your 24 hours, every mm. now that you've utilized to do something meaningful, um, you know, if it's your relationship, whatever it is, you're really making the most of it. Mm. And people don't do that. They I like tend it, to, the quality. The quality, not the quantity. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, <laughs> I'm excited. So many things to think about. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to check my notes and see if there's any other questions no problem. that I've got in there. That, um, I'm not sure how much time. Yeah, that's, that's funny time. So that's what I was like, yeah, how many? Yeah. Has it been two, three hours? <laughs> um, that's another thing whilst you're doing that in terms of this whole concept of time, because remember, as a physical being, you're trapped in this dimension and in this body, but you have counterparts like your spirit and your soul and mm. your etheric being that is not trapped within this time zone. So you can actually travel, experience things in different realms and do so much in different realms that you bring back to this physical and that's another way of like okay mm. i did this i did that but people be like how did you do that but you left your body and came back or you were in different dimensions doing different things at that same moment because you you are multi you know mm. multi-talented multi-personality multi yeah being okay yeah. yeah i like that um two questions that are different yeah uh, I'll, I'll put out the categories and I'll let you pick okay. so um, two topics yeah. one of them is uh, money one of them psychedelics mm. pick which one and I'll ask the question <laughs> you can ask both isn't it? <laughs> okay okay yeah. so um, I'll start with the the psychedelics question first yeah. so um, I feel like you've got two different types of psychedelics. So you've got mm. the natural psychedelics, such as like the magic mushroom that you might pick, mm. uh, the, the marijuana plant that you can grow, and obviously you mm -hmm. take that anyhow, and then you have a psychedelic experience of that uh, you interpret. And then you also have the synthetic ones like LSD mm. and MDMA and so on and so on. Um, so yeah, I'd like to kind of get your opinions on using these as tools for ascension. Mm. Um, and maybe, you know, it makes me think of at what point if you do use them as tools, at what point do you stop? Mm. Should you use them as tools? Should you not? Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll take yeah. it from there. I mean, it, it depends by what you mean tools um, in the sense that if you can do something naturally, mm. then you don't need anything externally. So a lot of times people are doing it because they, they're using it to, like you say, maybe enhance. So or, like a fast track. Yeah, exactly. If you're so, just starting out and you're, you're like, you know what, and a friend comes along, they're like, yeah. use the magic mushroom trip as a fast track to your ego death and awakening experience. And, yeah. you know, if you're a proper newbie and you don't know anything, yeah. would you advise somebody to... No, me personally, <laughs> no, because I'm saying anything that's fast track in that sense, um, organic growth is always better because... Mm. Look, going back to what we were saying, you savor the moment, you you learn, and you you know you can't you can't avoid the burn and learn experience. Yeah, so people would love to be able to just get it given to them, or you just click your fingers and you are now spiritual. You hear people that go, "Oh, I went on a retreat and now I'm spiritual," <laughs> like just because of one experience. You know, mm. um, so there's this thing about fast. That's why we're saying that like fast food, everything is fast because you're rushing, but really. A butterfly takes time to become a butterfly because you're learning and there's a process and there's a reason for everything. So if you're using drugs or well, sorry, drugs like for recreation, rec creation, <laughs> you're, you're literally wrecking creation, as opposed to in its natural state. So for example, you said about herbs. Um, what you call weed, but you can take it as a herb or as in a natural state, which is fine. It's like drinking tea. Um, however, but if you then start to now embellish it by adding other things to it, you know, using tobacco or putting Rizla paper and then putting smoke into your lungs, it changes it entirely from what it's supposed to, you know, do. But 
um, if, if people are doing things just to have an experience, then you have to think, is this an intoxicant? Because any form of intoxication actually messes with you. Mm. And, and there's a point where you won't know when you're becoming addicted. Because most people that are, say, drinking alcohol, they'll be like, I'm not drunk. Like, everyone else can see they're drunk, but mm. they're like, I'm not drunk. And so it's easy to be, you know, fall into that category. So it's better not to, to do it at all. Um, especially if you can do those things naturally. Like, people want this because what it does, it deals with the hippocampus region of the brain in the cerebellum. And what, it, what that does, it makes you hallucinate. That's the part of your brain that gives you hallucinations and you're calm and you're relaxed. And, and so people try to induce that. But you can actually get into, you know, from alpha wave to, you know, beta or beta wave. Naturally, you can um, remote view. You can enhance your, by, by opening your pineal gland, you can actually be able to like, um, use your telepathy, psychometry, clairvoyance, and these are things that intuition, you can do all of this without having to do that. But obviously, mm. it takes a bit more work because you've got to, um, you've got to study, you've got to learn to relax, you've got to learn to meditate. I think this always happens, but that's my alarm, excuse me. Yeah, so you've got to learn to do these things naturally, to do these things naturally without using you know, all of these things. But people are going to be people in mm. terms of experiencing. Um, but I think it's like growing up. Because when you're a child or younger, you go parties, you want to drink, smoke, you want to experiment with things. And it can lead to two paths. Someone who, mm. I've done that, I don't need it, I'm now mature. Or you can become addicted and it takes you to a whole different way where yeah. you're now relying on it. And then it just takes you down a, a Yeah, I feel like I've personally seen that where half of my friends been there, done that. Now they're happy doing it sober. Mm. Myself as well, I've been sober for years now. I don't need these plant medicines anymore, but I'm grateful for the experience that I had. Mm. And then I've got some other friends who, I think they're on it like every weekend now, mm. mushrooms, mushrooms, and they've made like best friends with the entities yeah, out re there. And become it becomes it. like a whole different thing. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, yeah. I Your think, last yeah. question, money? So, um, uh, money thing. So, uh, this was a discussion I think I had with my friend this morning, actually, before we came out. So, talking about, um, obviously, money as an energetic concept and as a concept of the matrix. So, mm -hmm. uh, pound signs in your account or the kind of energetic concept of its energy, mm -hmm. um, it can manifest in different ways. So, the way I've always seen it is, um, again, duality to different ways. You can yeah. rely on the matrix to provide for you. You mm. can go do your nine to five or you can do your job. You can exchange your services. You get money in your account and then use it to purchase things and experience that you want. Mm. Or you can rely on this infinite creation source or whatever this energy is around that kind of always provides. Well, not kind of, it, mm -hmm. it always provides. And you rely on that. And um, through relying on this source you're always provided for and it might mm. not come in like a monetary way somebody you mm. know might give you a discount or mm -hmm. give you a free thing or invite you somewhere and it's all paid for and whatever else um so i feel like yeah there's two pathways to it yeah uh but both is basically money and is it's kind of like what you need to survive in this society mm. so um and then kind of, that kind of brings up a whole thing of maybe like you know when you're doing spiritual work uh charging or how do you kind of go down a path where you dedicate your life more to mm. learning about things and then how do you provide for yourself if you're not relying on the system mm. to then be so in tune with creation that you're always provided for mm. and trusting yeah. so yeah my kind of question is you've got two paths money mm. what's your idea of how to live mm. an abundant life where you're provided for yeah so um when you say money it's really currency mm. yeah because it's a flow of energy um, and again, when it comes to energy, like the fire example is how you use it positively or negatively. And when you say currency, you have to think that it's a flow of energy, not the paper. Because, um, and then when you say currency, you have to think that you have different realms and different states and different entities that vibrate on the different realms. And so when you're con this is what when people are saying the universe provides for me 
they have to remember there's more than a universe. You've got multiverses and omniverses. So <laughs> it's like, it's the energy source that you're tapping into that is helping or providing for you. And these could be your ancestors and other entities that are looking out for you and protecting you. Mm. And they will help you once you're connected to them because, like you say, you're channeling. And when you're doing positive or good works for humanity, like truth is a very powerful energy. And so you will be provided and taken care of. And it's, people say the power of attraction, there's more to it than that. They're actually secrets, tones, vibrations, and frequencies that you can tap into. And yes, as long as you're resonating with those energies, because um, it's a resonant frequency. Mm. So when you're like vibrating on that, then, then you're resonating with um, the source that will give you that currency to flow. Mm. So yes, you will be all right. Um, if you worry about money and chase it, like you shouldn't chase money because as I said, you are the universe. That universe attracts everything to it. Yes, because you're the center of your universe. Mm. And without you, nothing around you would exist. So you, when people say the universe provides for me, they're literally saying they're providing for themselves because mm. they are the universe that can resonate or attract or pull the things that they need for themselves. But mm. you get influences or other entities that try to... The distraction is real. That's why mm. they make you constantly not in a state of vibration that is resonating with that frequency. So you worry about my bills and oh, what am I going to do about this and about that? So then it throws you off being on that resonance. So for example, in our culture of Wusabat, we know about tones, vibrations and frequency. And we know that mm. your body vibrates on the A tone, you know, and uh, the planet vibrates on the F tone and the cosmos vibrates on the C tone. So if you're in tune with like, the, you know, the planet Earth, they talk and say um, Schumann resonance because it's a particular vibration. Now, someone can have you vibrating on the wrong frequency, which can just be a few degrees off. Mm. So, for example, they've tuned the eight on musical instruments to 440 hertz, which should be 432 hertz, which is a much more kind of like calmer vibration. So it's really knowing the sciences of tuning into the right energies so that you can get that currency to manifest mm. anything that you want, you see. Yeah. yeah, interesting that I think what you said about just the smallest change in your vibration can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So where it's subtle, yes, but it can make a huge Very difference. Impactful, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, thank you for for sharing that. So I think yeah, I'm all uh, wrapped up with my questions. I, I would like to just say one more thing, mm -hmm. and then we can uh, wrap up with that. It's based on what you just said now about truth mm. being one of the. The, the highest vibrations and so on. It's actually something I saw the other day. Um, you know, it had like the pyramid of all the vibrations and... Mm. and um, Different colours. And saying, yeah, yeah, love is the highest. Mm -hmm. And then it was just a guy saying, actually, truth and authenticity is yeah. the highest thing. Yeah. Um, and it... But it's, this is what people do. Like, they, they say the same mm. thing in different ways. Because if, um, if you're truthful, then that's going to be love. Mm. It's like... It's not that, you know what I mean? It's like they make it out like, okay, it's not love. Okay, let me give you a good example. I think it's one of the things again with the English language being yeah, like exactly. limited. So because, just... But then there's different types of love as mm. well. Going back to what we were saying, like love can be looked at L-O-V-E, but you spell it backwards, it's evil phonetically. Yeah. So there's two ways of looking at everything, this duality. But what I'm saying is it's like, for example, religion can be beautiful for people that are just starting out and they're sincere and their intentions are correct. This is why I say, for example, Islam's a beautiful religion for, for Muslims, if they're doing it and practicing it correctly. And if you ask them what does, you know, Muslim mean, they will say one who submits. And, but the real word, when you translate it, it's actually one who is safe or one who is of peace, like more salam, because the word salam mm. means peace, right? So that's why Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, so they say, assalamu alaikum, which is, you know, peace be with you. But I'm saying that to say that people will get into dogma and 
argue with you to say, no, it means submit. It doesn't mean one who's of peace. Mm. But you're like, if you are of peace, you will naturally submit to the, to mm. the creator. So there's no point in arguing. So I'm saying that to say the same thing where you're like, love, true love, which is really, we say in our language, ashuk, which is divine love, unconditional love for everyone and everything is separate to love, which is me, myself, and I, and lust, and I want, because I love you because you do something for me. I love mm. you because you're pretty. I love you because you cook for me. I, it's there, there's a condition to that type of love, whereas divine love or unconditional love is one that transcends everything. You know? So that's true love, and like you say, that will give you truth, because if you're dealing with truth, you can't then... Um, like discriminate, mm. deal with racism, deal with all the lower vibrations that causes divisions mm. and, you know, killings and murders and rapes and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Same, same, yeah. but different. Yeah, <laughs> same thing, but different. Yeah, yeah but yeah, um, been, been a good I don't know, that's been like interview. powerful pack up, packed, up, packed out with... Uh, Lots of things to think about. Thank yeah. you so much for your time and sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Well, they say that you know this currency and wisdom and knowledge is basically the the, the thing right now that everyone's after. Mm. Um, and it's one of those things: experiential knowledge you can't buy. Yeah, you you have to read it, understand, overstand, integrate to mm. be able to share. So yeah, you've, you hold a lot of wisdom. So thank you for sharing that with me and no, thank, with the thank, world as well. Thank you, thank you for sharing um, and asking me those questions. I have to also say, again, this is the trick here. It's like, there's always the duality. Mm. So when you say knowledge, it can be vague because there's right knowledge mm. and there's wrong knowledge. And people can have wrong knowledge and think they've got right knowledge. And people can have right knowledge and, or think they've got right knowledge and they've got wrong knowledge. This is why in Wul Sabat, there are different stages. So we say right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right overstanding, mm. which leads you to sound, right reasoning. You see, so there are, there are different stages. And um, yeah, because people can trip on knowledge as well. You just got so much knowledge, yeah. and then they don't have any common sense, or they don't have no love. Mm. And it's like, yeah, you know, I was going to use an A word, a rude <laughs> word. I'm like, you have all this knowledge, but you are, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we could uh, spend this time and share and mm. hopefully the viewers and, you know, people also can benefit from yeah. it because ultimately that's what it's about. Yes. Yeah. So Perfect. a shock, peace. <laughs>